Hello Leo, welcome to your December 2017 love reading. It's Raina here. And what do I have to tell you? Um, well, I am offering 20% off of all of my readings through the end of December with the coupon code JUPITER. Please use all caps. And I think that's about it as I shuffle the cards. Yeah, I think that's about it. Well, I guess I could uh, tell you in December that you are having a lot of energy in the fifth house, which is your natural house. You rule the fifth house, which has to do with love. So falling in love, creativity, and home business, but we're talking about love here. So with uh, that Sagittarius, so planets in Sag, a new moon in this house, the sun there. The new moon is on the 18th, so new beginnings. And um, as I've said in prior readings that um, I try to make these for singles and for people who are connected to a relationship, and it seems like it, it always, or most of the times, is about dealing with relationships, so... I'm going to have to figure something out here. I think it has to do with the type of spread this is. And I think it yields itself or lends itself more to um, that type of reading. That's the only thing I can think of. So we'll figure it out. Oh, and they are doing work outside. So um, I, I had mentioned it in a, in a past reading, but it, it didn't really um, manifest. And now I'm, I'm hearing some rumbling out there. So hopefully I can get this out here before they bring in the big machines. Wow. This is a very positive spread when it comes to love for Leo. So I just want, I want you to know that. I don't even know if there's much of a conflict here. It sounds like this is more um, just kind of like reiterating all the good stuff. The heart of the matter is the Ten of Cups, which has to do with just a happy union, weddings, family celebration, family joy. So um, I'm even thinking that in some cases it's like a quick quickie where you meet somebody and you hit it off and you're like getting married in six months. Um, you did have that solar eclipse in your sign. So, you know, if you met somebody and you're just like, wow, this person is like the bee's knees. And now you're like already uh, toasting the wedding or the at least getting engaged or something like that. And when I say getting married, getting engaged, whatever the equivalent is, if you are not doing that, having some kind of like you're moving in together or something like that, because not everybody gets married. And I always feel like old fashioned when I, when I say getting married, getting engaged, but some people get married, don't they? I mean, there's still some people that get married. Um, it could be with a fellow fire sign, and definitely with fire signs, especially Aries. I could see uh, you doing something spontaneously. I, I just thought of going to Vegas, <clears throat> something like that. But um, with fire, with another fire sign, you can be like very enthusiastic to the point of just doing something rashly. But in all of these cards, there's nothing that suggests that that is going to come back to haunt you. Because then we have, um, as the energy right now, the Ten of Pentacles, which deals with affluence, family wealth. So it could be that you have married into a family or you've joined forces with somebody who comes from a affluent background and it's like you're you're like uh, joining up with somebody who is um, making you uh, 
advance in your in your um, whatever you want to call uh, social status. But I don't think it's. I'm not saying that you would ever marry for money. But Leo people like to be with the beautiful people. They tend to be uh, social climbers because of that, um, or see themselves as royalty, as the elite in 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 uh, wherever they, so the social elite. Because the higher message too is the Queen of Wands. This is a card of elevation, a feeling. Uh, a sense of confidence, and it's like you've arrived. This could also be, especially if you're a woman, that you are in a in your uh, profession that you have some kind of status. And I don't know if um, um, this is like spilling over. I think because this is a spiritual message, so it's almost like saying whether it's on your workplace or in your personal life, you're feeling this surge of confidence of feeling like you are in a good place, feeling very positive in your life. And so when people feel like that, it tends to, to affect other areas of their life. Life, And, you know, I was thinking, well, why would Leo be experiencing this but again you had two new moons in the summer I mean northern hemisphere I should say and you know in uh, July and August and then you also have the north node in your sign and so I feel like the sign of Leo sun and rising because this is people say well is this for rising sign well tarot and rising sign I don't know but definitely when I'm talking about astrological transits, it can impact people with their, with their rising sign as well. And with um, the north node in your sign, that can lend itself to having certain things happen that seem random, out of the blue, but they, tend to, but they turn out to be things that that you look back upon and it, you realize that it was like the hand of fate it was like this wonderful gift from the universe that kind of came your way in a seemingly random fashion but it's really part of the bigger picture and an example would be like you find your soulmate okay that's a, this is a love reading so i'd like to keep it on that level but it might not be that you were going out and looking for the person. Maybe you went grocery shopping and one thing led to another and you met that person. And it, on the surface, it seems like, wow, you know, this is just um, by accident and it was anything but. So keep, keep an eye open, not just in, in December, but throughout 2018, through most of the year, and see if these incidents keep happening. Because I wouldn't be surprised at all if you experience these things. And then, like the Eight of Wands, it's like, it's almost like your soul, soul was waiting for it, and it doesn't need to wait anymore. You know, so it's like you're meant to meet the certain person and you don't have to go through this long drawn out process because you know that you were meant to be with this person. And tip and, you know, of course, uh, mileage may vary. I'm not saying that you should just uh, move in with somebody you met yesterday. Um, but I'm usually of the cautious on the on the side of uh, caution. But um the Eight of Wands is about throwing caution to the wind and really being um, accelerating what happens. What crosses you is the King of Cups. And I wonder if this is a Cancer person because I did get another card that's connected to Cancer. The other water signs are um, Scorpio and Pisces. And Scorpios tend to find Leos really big time. <laughs> but anyway, this is kind of a challenge position. So this could be an older male who is, they could have an alcohol problem, 
a problem with prescription pills. I'm saying those particularly that are depressants um, or just substance abuse in general or they and or they have some kind of an emotional problem, bipolar, you know, like um, an emo yeah, like an emotional disorder, a mental disorder, or they are just being manipulative. Maybe it's your ex. But, uh, in December, we have a Mercury retrograde. So someone could come back, try to make contact with you from your past, who is unstable emotionally. And they might be the kind of person who knows how to gaslight you, try to make you feel like you're crazy. That's like a narcissist. But this is more, because it's cups, it could be somebody who is a, more of a covert not narcissist. I think one type of a narcissist is somebody who acts like you're the only person who can save them. They always have problems. And if you try to distance yourself from them, you know, they act like you're just so horrible and they try to guilt you, but they don't, but they don't act like they are in control of their lives. They actually act like their lives are a mess and you're the only person who can save them. So it could be somebody like that. It's more of like an emotional domination. Uh, than the typical narcissist who tries to act like they are superior to you. This person may actually act like you're superior to them, but they're still trying to manipulate. And we have here another confirmation if this is a if this is a cancer person, but in the near future, this card represents, or it could be advice, where you have to really gain control of the situation at hand. Um, as I said up in the top area, you may be somebody who has made a commitment to somebody. And everything is good. There's a lot of good stuff on that top row. But there may be somebody from the past who is trying to thwart that. And... Um, the, the chariot card is about maintaining kind of a laser focus when there's a lot going on around you that could throw you uh, off your game and keep you um, distracted or otherwise not really looking at the situation in an appropriate way. And... The other thing about the chariot card is it's like reminding you about all the good stuff that is happening in your life. You are winning, you are succeeding, you're getting ahead. And it may seem like if, if somebody comes back into your life, by the way, um, kings can be fathers. So if this is your father, that could be, sometimes people do have problematic parents who try to control them and uh, in many different ways. One of them can be emotionally. And you're reminded that you are now in a position where you have had success in your life. You may have had somebody who tried to imply that you weren't good enough and you are don't get sucked into their game. So whether it's an ex or your father don't get sucked into their game because that's what they're all about. That's why they do what they do is they try to get you to doubt yourself. And um, this is, as a spiritual message, the Queen of Wands is talking about this newly found, maybe in some cases, self-esteem that has come about because you feel this sense of like when, when relationships, when you fall in love, it's not that the other person by loving you is making you feel loved. It's that they are mirroring your the beauty of your soul because they see it. They really can see that and it's covered for you. Sometimes it's covered for, for, um, for the person who has that low self-esteem. They can't see the good within themselves and that other person tells you all the things that they love about you and that 
allows you to see yourself in an exalted light. And I read this somewhere, you know, I'm paraphrasing, and I can't remember where I read it, but I, I did not um, come up with that myself, but it resonated with me because I do think that's true. And, um, it, but it's not that, that their love itself is what allows you to love yourself. It's their understanding and their recognition of your, of your worth and goodness. But if they went away, you would still have the fact that they recognize those qualities within you. That, that would never leave. And so this other person may um, point out your flaws and try to get you to question yourself all the time. Gaslighting is a technique that's used by narcissists to make, to, to make people question their perceptions. And um, that's something that um, can throw you off balance. And this is about being in control of your thoughts, your consciousness. And meditation can help with that if you don't feel like you're there yet. The outcome is the lover's card. And that's the, when I said that this was such a great outcome. It's like love wins the day. And it's all about you and this other person. You know, this, whatever else is going on with you, that person loves you. And um, you will, I think you will realize that, that you have somebody in your corner and um, everybody else is just noise. You know, all these other opinions are just noise. The lover's card is about making a commitment, going deeper into that relationship. It's not just a surface thing. You know, you can have a marriage like the Ten of Cups, but it's all for show. And the, the lover's card is about really being in love. Sometimes it represents a choice. So you may have to choose whether or not to allow somebody to, to still be in contact with you if they have a disruptive influence. Um, the lover's card connects to Gemini and we do have, it's interesting because we do have a full moon in the, in Gemini on December 3rd. So I don't know if it's a timing issue, but this is a very romantic and it's, it's actually wonderful on many levels financial abundance, happiness, family unity, self-confidence. So I hope you enjoyed this, Leo, and have a great December. Bye.